I'm Anita Chirmamilla. I'm the Extension Cropping System Specialist at the Langdon Research Extension Center. Today, I'm going to speak, uh, specifically focus on uh, the insecticide treatments and their efficacy on managing canola flea beetles. And I would like to acknowledge my team members uh, who were part of this study, and they are uh, listed out in, at the bottom of the slide. So everybody knows about uh, flea beetles. They don't need any introduction uh, for in the canola world. This is the number one most serious early season insect pest in canola, and it has a capability of causing severe damage, uh, like uh, um, uh, affecting the growth of the seedlings to almost wiping out the entire fields overnight. So we have two main species that uh, uh, are very uh, common in our area. That is the most common one is the black, uh, uh, or the crucifer flea beetle, which is Philotreta cruciferae. This is the most abundant species, and it it uh, uh, emerges uh, in the spring from its overwintering uh, sites a little later than the striped one, and it is also a little easy to control. And thankfully, we that is the most dominant species in our area. But the second one is the striped flea beetle, which is the Philotreta striolata, and this is. Uh, uh, comparatively less abundant species in, in our area, but we are watching the numbers increasing year by year. Uh, and it emerges uh, a little earlier in the season. This is the first to emerge. And it has been reported that this uh, um, uh, striped flea beetle is a little tough to control and it has shown some uh, tolerance to uh, neonic seed treatments. So uh, our... Uh, you know, since it is the uh, flea beetles uh, are the early season pests, um, traditionally and uh, in the past we have been, uh, we the producers have heavily relied on using seed treatments. And the for the past 10 or 15 years, the only the active ingredient that has been uh, used was the neonix. And over the years, we've, we've been seeing that they have become less and less effective. And uh, uh, thankfully, we in there are two more new active ingredients that came into the market. And so we need to test those uh, the efficacy of those seed treatments. And also, there are a number of uh, foliar insecticides that are available or registered uh, in North Dakota to use against these uh, flea beetles. So every year, I get a question from uh, the growers is like, uh, are seed treatments worth the cost? And also, which seed treatment is the best one? So for to answer these questions, we conducted these trials at uh, four different locations in North Dakota, uh, looking at the efficacy of uh, uh, all the current, uh, currently available seed treatment options, as well as the foliar insecticides. And here, these are the four locations. Um, I'm not presenting the data from Minnesota uh, right now, but uh, the uh, results are from the other three locations. And these are the planting dates and harvesting dates. And this is a little busy slide. And we tested, a, this is a seed treatment uh, trial. Uh, we had a total of 14 different treatments. And I can explain this. Uh, all these treatments have been grouped into three, uh, three basic groups. The first one is a neonic uh, alone seed treatment. And the second group is a premix of one active ingredient is a neonic and the other one is uh, either a, a, a diamide or a butanolite. These are the two new modes of actions that have been introduced into the market recently. So the second group has uh, the premix of either uh, one is a neonic and the other is either a diamide or a butanolide. And the third group is a premix of two active ingredient uh, two active ingredients followed by a foliar spray or a foliar spray with a pythroid. So you can see the high, the treatments that are highlighted in the gold. These are the experimental uh, treatments which had the premixes at higher concentrations. These are not commercially available. These are only for experimental purposes that we tried. So the near the two um, chemicals that uh, fall under the neonix are the Helix Vibrance and Prosper Evergrowl. Diamides are Lumidum and Fortenza. Butanolide is the Buteo Start. And the Pyrethroid is the Brigade or Bifantrin that we tested. So, like I said, 
uh, most of our populations are a mixed population, so both striped and crucifer, and their uh, ratios change uh, year by year. But the year 2023, we had a mix of cruci both the crucifer as well as striped, but the majority are the crucifer flea beetles. So we assess the feeding rate injury at uh, 3, 7, 10, and 14 days after emergence using a, um, a pitting scale of 0 to 6, where 0 is no pits and 6 is the plant is dead. So first, to clean up the data, because we have uh, 14 different treatments, it will uh, clutter the chart. So first, this is uh, the the data showing the comparison of commercial premixes, uh, the commercial premix concentrations with experimental rates of premixes uh, added to the neonics. So you can see the highlighted ones are the commercially available combinations of uh, a neonic uh, with uh, a diamide or a butanolide and the rest of them are the experimental concentrations. And here, the different colors of the bars are the feeding injury ratings at 3, 7, 10, and 14 days after emergence. And as you see, uh, you know, there is not much difference between uh, the commercially, avail uh, commercially available uh, premix concentration compared to the experimental concentration. So there was no any, there was no advantage of using higher concentrations of these uh, active ingredients. So we kind of uh, uh, took these, uh, eliminated these uh, uh, higher concentration or the experimental uh, uh, um, premixes from the data to simplify the data. So now this is the data where we are comparing those three groups that I talked about again uh, with the untreated check, which, is, uh, which has only fungicide. So the first one is uh, uh, the neonic, and then the second group is the neonic plus uh, a diamide or a, a butanolide, and the third group is a premix with a, a pyrethroid or a, a foliar spray of pyrethroid. So this is the data at three days after emergence. You have the flea beetle injury rating on the uh, y-axis, and you can see compared to the fungicide check, um, all, all the C treatments had significantly lower injury at uh, at three days. And within the treatments, within the C treatments, you can see that the neonics had oh, alone, neonic alone was not very effective or it had the high, uh, highest uh, uh, injury compared to the premixes. Now, Look at the seven days after emergence. Yes, the flea beetle injury rating went up high. However, the trend remained the same. And then 10 days after emergence, same trend. Again, you can notice that the injury ratings has been going up, but still, uh, C treatments are doing better compared to the untreated control. And again, same trend after 14 days after emergence. So when we when we had the yields uh, um, uh, yields for all these treatments, you can see that yes, all the C treatments did very well when compared to the untreated check. However, within the uh, C treatments, the neonics alone had a very low uh, uh, lower yield compared to the premixes, and the best. Best treatment was like a premix C treatment followed by a pyrethroid C treatment and a pyrethroid uh, foliar application. This is because like uh, in areas where there are very high populations of flea beetles, this is, uh, you can see clearly that a premix followed by um, a premix uh, and a foliar spray is the best option in, in high infestation areas. Um, okay, let me forward. Okay, when when we say like, yes, whatever, the injury rating was low, but how does it translate into dollars? So this is the, um, you can, you can see the, the last uh, uh, column, you can uh, focus on the last column here, where you can see the total cost of all these seed treatments and uh, foliar sprays. And these are compared with the, uh, single foliar spray as well as uh, 
uh, foliar spray twice with the seed treatment. This was from the other data. We just added this for the comparison sake. But you can see the total cost here in the last column. And here in this chart, you can see, again, the last column focus with the highlighted ones. This is the net increase or the profit of using these treatments compared to the untreated check. So you can see here, yes, um, using Neonic alone, yes, we made a little more money than using a premix of two active ingredients, a little more money, but the best one is always a premix of two active ingredients and then a foliar spray of a pyrethroid. So our mess take home message is yes, the premixes of the neo uh, of neonics with the newer modes of action, either whether it, it, it is a diamide or a butanolide, they had showed increased efficacy uh, on both the species of these uh, flea beetles compared to neonic alone. And in, in, in areas where you have severe infestations of the flea beetles, there will be repeated infestations. And in those cases, you, ju you just have to use the uh, uh, foliar application at uh, 10 to 21 days after emergence because seed treatments alone can't uh, control uh, these flea beetles in those areas. So the second trial is our um, um, uh, foliar trial. And we, we had this, uh, the list of these um, uh, insecticides that are registered for flea beetles and we checked them against a single uh, active ingredient seed treatment, which is a neonic and an untreated control. And here, these are the groups of the chemicals that we chose. And here, again, this is a busy slide. I would, I would want you to focus on, these are all the treatments on the y-axis and the flea beetle injury on the y-axis. And these different colored bars are, are the ratings pre-application, three, seven, and 14 days after applications. So here you can see like, yes, all the uh, foliar applications did better than the uh, C treatment and the fungicide check when, when it comes to the injury ratings or lowering the injury. And when you uh, compare the yields, almost all the, um, all the foliar, all the insecticides are very similar and there isn't much difference between them, except for when you use the uh, uh, pyrethroid brigade or bifenthrin twice, it had a comparatively higher yields when compared to single application of these uh, uh, insecticides. Vantacor isn't uh, registered for um, canola flea beetles, but we just tested it and uh, uh, obviously it didn't do very well uh, with the canola flea beetles. So, our message is uh, all foliar insecticides tested had uh, lower feeding injury and higher yield than the fungicide check and uh, the seed treatments. And most pyrethroid insecticides and exetal had lower feeding injury and increased yield over Vantacor. And pyrethroid uh, bifenthrin applied twice had lower feeding injury as well as higher yields compared to the Delta Gold and Vantacor. So with that, I would like to thank the Northern Canola Growers Association for their uh, funding and also um, our private partners for supplying the seeds. Thank you.